The aroma of freshly brewed coffee filled the air as I stepped into the cozy cafe, instantly warming me from the bitter chill outside. This was my sanctuary, a familiar space where I could breathe and recenter myself amidst the chaos of running my boutique. Little did I know that my peaceful morning routine was about to be shattered. Well, well, if it isn't Mira herself, a voice sneered from behind me. I froze, recognizing that condescending tone all too well. Slowly turning, I came face to face with Eli, my ex-husband, looking every bit as smug as I remembered. By his side stood a woman I didn't recognize, her perfectly coiffed hair and designer ensemble radiating an aura of wealth. Eli, I managed, struggling to keep my voice level. What a surprise! His lips curled into a cold smile. Mira, meet Lena, my fiancé and soon-to-be wife. Lena extended a perfectly manicured hand, her engagement ring glittering like a neon sign announcing her status. So lovely to finally meet you, she cooed, her voice dripping with artificial sweetness. I forced myself to shake her hand, painfully aware of the stark contrast between her polished demeanor and my casual, worn attire. In that moment, I felt small and insignificant in their presence. Now, now, Lena, don't be too warm towards my ex-wife, Eli chuckled, looping an arm around her waist in a possessive gesture. She's just the owner of a little boutique, struggling to make ends meet. My cheeks burned with humiliation, but I refused to show weakness. At least my business is built on hard work and integrity, not shady deals like some people. Eli's eyes narrowed dangerously. Watch your tone, Mira. Wouldn't want to jeopardize that precious little shop of yours now, would we? Before I could respond, Lena interjected smoothly. Eli, dear, let's not dwell on unpleasantries. Might have Mira's just upset she couldn't keep a husband satisfied. She tossed me a pitying glance that felt like a slap in the face. Rage bubbled within me but I swallowed it down, not wanting to give them the satisfaction of a reaction. With as much dignity as I could muster, I turned on my heel and stormed out of the café, the weight of their laughter following me into the frigid air. As I marched down the bustling street, tears of humiliation stung my eyes. How dare Eli flaunt his new life as if our marriage meant nothing? And that Lena... Her words cut deeper than any insult implying I was to blame for our failed relationship. But beneath the hurt and anger, a newfound determination took root. I would not crumble under their disdain. My boutique was more than just a business. It was a testament to my resilience, my very identity, and I would fight tooth and nail to protect it, no matter what challenges came my way. With renewed resolve, I straightened my shoulders and lifted my chin high. Eli and his pretentious fiancé could sneer all they wanted. This was my life, my world, and I would emerge victorious, leaving their scorn as nothing more than a bitter aftertaste. Little did I know that frosty encounter was merely the first taste of a storm brewing on the horizon, one that would test the very limits of my strength and perseverance. I should have seen the signs earlier, the cracks in our marriage that kept widening while I naively tried to plaster them over. Eli's obsession with wealth and status consumed him like a ravenous beast, leaving no room for my dreams or our life together. "'Another upscale client wants to book an appointment,' I announced one evening, excitement dancing in my voice as I emerged from my makeshift office space. Eli barely glanced up from his laptop, his face pinched with displeasure. "'What did I tell you about taking on those snobby upper-class customers? They'll drain you dry with their ridiculous demands.' My shoulders slumped, enthusiasm deflating, but this could be huge exposure for the boutique. If I impress them... When are you going to give up this silly hobby of yours? Eli snapped, slamming the laptop shut with a harsh thud. We need real income, not whatever pennies you collect from those cheap impulse sales. I flinched as if he'd struck me. It's not just a hobby, Eli. My boutique is my passion, my dream. I thought you supported me. He scoffed, raking a hand through his meticulously styled hair. Even in our most heated arguments, the man was consumed with appearances. Support you in this endless money pit that will never amount to anything substantial? Wake up, Mira. Tears pricked my eyes, but I blinked them back furiously. So my dreams don't matter as long as I'm not making Silicon Valley millions like your big-shot tech friends? Those big-shot friends actually understand the value of hard work and ambition, Eli sneered not wasting time on ridiculous pipe dreams that will leave us drowning in debt. His words sliced deeper than any knife. 
How could the man I loved tear down my aspirations so callously? But this was nothing new, a tired dance we'd performed countless times, with me desperately seeking his approval while he crushed my efforts beneath his polished dress shoes. Little did I know Eli's contempt ran far deeper than I could have imagined. It wasn't until weeks later, when a close friend revealed the truth about his indiscretions, that the full extent of his betrayal came crashing down upon me. Mira, I'm so sorry, but I saw Eli with another woman. They were intimate. The world seemed to tilt violently as the words registered. Intimate. Another woman, my chest constricted, breath escaping in ragged gasps as the room spun around me. When the pieces finally clicked into place, a cold, hard knot of resentment formed in the pit of my stomach. All the dismissals, the put-downs, the constant belittling, it was merely a smokescreen concealing Eli's ultimate act of disrespect. He had been unfaithful. He had chosen the empty promise of wealth and status over the woman who had loved him unconditionally. And in that moment, something inside me shifted, hardened like steel, tempered by the scorching flames of his deceit. Our divorce was a mere formality after that, a rubber stamp on the death of our crumbled marriage. As I boxed up what remained of our entwined lives, I silently vowed that one day, Eli would realize the gravity of his mistakes. One day I would make him pay for every ounce of anguish and humiliation he had put me through. Vengeance burned brightly in my heart, a blazing inferno that would not be extinguished until I emerged victorious from the ashes of our shattered bonds. The divorce proceedings were finally over, and I was left surveying the smoldering ruins of my life. Eli had taken his share and vanished, leaving me to pick up the pieces alone, but I refused to be a victim any longer. With a newfound determination burning in my veins, I threw myself into resurrecting my boutique from the ashes of our failed marriage. This was my one true passion, the dream Eli had mocked and trampled upon. Well, no more. I secured a small retail space in a slowly gentrifying neighborhood, and it's stretching every last dollar of my settlement to transform it into a stylish haven. Eclectic decor and hand-picked vintage furniture created a warm, inviting atmosphere that reflected my unique vision. The first few months were an uphill battle as I scrambled to rebuild my customer base and attract new clientele. Establishing myself in the competitive world of upscale retail felt like navigating a minefield. You'll never survive in this part of town. One dismissive shop owner sneered as I mistakenly wandered into his overpriced boutique seeking advice. These customers want luxury brands, not your cheap knockoff wares. I bit my tongue until I tasted copper, leveling him with an icy glare. My pieces are all meticulously curated and one of a kind, but I wouldn't expect someone who trades in generic mass-produced junk to understand true artistry. The man's face mottled with rage, but I had already spun on my heel and stormed out, refusing to justify his insults with a response. I would prove my worth through actions, not empty words. Day and night, I relentlessly promoted the boutique through social media and local events, determined to make it a success through sheer force of will. Slowly but surely, a loyal customer base emerged, drawn to the personalized experience and unique flair I offered. This dress is absolutely stunning. One repeat customer, Jenna, gushed one afternoon as she twirled in front of the mirror. I'll never find anything like this at those soulless mall chains. I beamed with pride, recalling how she had wandered in months ago, dismissive of the unknown boutique. Through patience and a genuine personal touch, I had earned her trust and admiration. I'm just so glad I can provide pieces that make women feel confident and stylish, I replied warmly. That's what true fashion should be about, empowering self-expression. As Jenna happily made her purchase, I surveyed my humble but thriving domain. The boutique had become more than just a business. It was a sanctuary, a community crafted through passion and resilience. This was my life's work, built from the shattered remains of a broken dream. No smug ex-husband or disapproving critic could dull the sense of pride and accomplishment that blossomed in my chest. I was a self-made woman who answered to no one but herself. The velvet flame of vengeance may have ignited my rebirth, but it was the joy of creation that kept me going. Little did I know, my path was about to collide with Eli's once more. But this time, I was armored in the strength of my convictions and the unbreakable spirit that had risen from the rubble of our ruined lives. This time, 
I would emerge the victor. The bell above the boutique door jingled, and I looked up with a welcoming smile that instantly froze on my face. Marie, an old friend from my neighborhood craft circle, stepped inside, her expression grave. Hey, Marie, what's wrong? I asked, concern furrowing my brow as she remained uncharacteristically silent. She exhaled heavily, wringing her hands. Mira, I... I don't know how to tell you this. I just heard from the community board. Your ex-husband Eli and his new fiancé are planning a major development project. My blood chilled in my veins as realization crept in. What kind of development? A massive luxury condo complex, she replied quietly. Right here in our neighborhood. The words hung like a damning sentence in the air. I could envision the cold, imposing edifice blotting out the warm, eclectic charm of the area, the same neighborhood that had embraced my humble boutique. It would gentrify and sterilize everything in its wake. No, he can't do this, I choked out, sinking onto a velvet-tufted ottoman as my legs threatened to give out. That smug, heartless bastard. Marie's expression twisted in sympathy. I'm so sorry, Mira. I know this must be incredibly difficult, especially given your history with Eli. My mind whirled as repressed memories and volatile emotions roiled within me like a violent storm. The cruel words, the belittling, the infidelity, it all came crashing back in agonizing clarity, and now he sought to destroy the one thing I had rebuilt from the wreckage of our ruined marriage. No. Not this time. Not again. My shock rapidly transmuted into a blazing fury, tempering my resolve into an unyielding blade of determination. I rose, spine straight as a steel rod, and met Marie's gaze directly. Well, he's got another thing coming if he thinks I'll just roll over, I stated, acid lacing my tone. I fought too damn hard to build this boutique from nothing. I clawed my way back from the depths of hell itself when Eli abandoned me. And I'll be damned if I let that miserable snake take it all away. Marie's eyes widened at the intensity blazing in my stare. Mira, what are you going to do? A feral smile carved itself across my face. What I should have done years ago, fight back, by any means necessary. Eli wants to gentrify this neighborhood? Fine, I'll raise a storm of protest that will drown his pretentious project in a tidal wave of resistance. I stalked over to the window, glaring out at the idyllic tree-lined streets that would soon be endangered. I spent too long being his victim, Marie. This time, the tables are turned. This time, the price of betrayal will cut much deeper than just a divorce settlement. Marie regarded me warily, but nodded in understanding. You know I'm here for you, whatever you need. I appreciate that, I replied, steely determination thrumming through my veins. Because I have a feeling Eli is about to reap the whirlwind of a lifetime, and when the dust settles, it'll be me left standing tall while he wallows in the rubble of his shattered ambitions. My path was clear now. The velvet flames of vengeance roared within my breast, emboldening my every breath. If Eli thought I would surrender my boutique and my community without a vicious fight, he was gravely mistaken. This time, I would be the one dictating the terms of our engagement— and he would pay a heavy price for his deplorable arrogance. The next few weeks were a whirlwind of activity as I rallied opposition against Eli's luxury condo development. Going door to door, I urged fellow small business owners to join my cause. This gentrification scheme will destroy everything we've built. I implored Rajesh, the jovial owner of the neighborhood's beloved Indian eatery. They'll price us out with exorbitant rent hikes and soulless corporate chains. Rajesh stroked his beard thoughtfully. You make a fair point, Mira. My humble restaurant would not survive such changes. Then you must stand with me, I pressed. Together we can raise awareness, protest at community meetings, apply pressure through all legal means necessary. His eyes blazed with resolution. You have my full support. Eli and his ilk cannot be allowed to destroy the cultural heart of our neighborhood for their greedy ambitions. One by one, I accumulated a formidable coalition of passionate small business owners and concerned residents. The local thrift store owners, artisan bakers, even the manager of the rundown but beloved bingo hall, all united under the rallying cry of preserving our unique community. Meanwhile, I devoted countless hours to unearthing any shred of legal or ethical liability in Eli's real estate plans, poring over public documents and records. I steadily compiled a damning portfolio of evidence environmental impact shortcutting, 
building code violations, shady zoning loopholes exploited for maximum profit margins. With each new discovery, my determination solidified like steel. You think you can gentrify this neighborhood however you please? I muttered darkly, meticulously documenting every transgression. I'll bury you in lawsuits and bureaucratic nightmares until your precious project asphyxiates on its own hubris. Finally, the night of the first community board meeting arrived. Eli and his sleek entourage of investors filed into the overcrowded auditorium, looking every bit the arrogant one-percenters blind to the consequences of their actions. I watched in grim satisfaction as their expressions soured upon seeing the overflowing crowd of protesters, my loyal army armed with posters and unified chants decrying the condo complex. This is outrageous, Eli hissed as he pushed past me, his walnut eyes flashing with disdain. You just can't let go of your miserable vendetta, can you, Mira? I matched his glare with steely defiance. I'm simply exercising my rights as a citizen to defend my community, Eli. Of course, you're far too arrogant to see past your own greed. His jaw clenched with barely restrained fury, but he seemed to think better of escalating the confrontation as more protesters converged on us. We'll see how smug you are after this debacle implodes spectacularly, he growled under his breath before storming off. The meeting proved to be merely the opening salvo in my battle to bring Eli's precious development crumbling down. As he launched into his polished pitch, I sat front and center, my arsenal of evidence laid out before me like gleaming ammunition. One by one I bombarded the hapless presenters and city officials with evidence of malfeasance, building an impenetrable legal quagmire around the complex that would prove near impossible to overcome. By the time the smoke cleared, Eli was a seething, crimson-faced contrast to his formerly smug composure. I had drawn first blood, exposing his shady practices to widespread public condemnation. This isn't over, he snarled as the meeting dispersed amid raucous jeers and protests. Not by a long shot. I simply smiled thinly, savoring the exquisite taste of retributive justice already on my lips. Oh, Eli, I purred with lethal sweetness. You have no idea just how far I'm willing to go to ensure you reap the devastation you've sown. This is merely the opening move in a game you've already lost. Eli's face contorted in impotent rage as he was swept away by the fuming crowd. Let him posture and bluster. I relished the knowledge that this was only the beginning. The fire of vengeance would not be sated until Eli's world lay in smoldering ruins at my feet. He would pay for every indignity, every heartbreak, with the shattered shards of his own hubris. And I would be the one wielding the hammer of justice that rained down upon his lofty, unworthy empire. The aftermath of that fateful community meeting left shockwaves reverberating through the city. My methodical expose of Eli's shady development practices sparked widespread public outcry and media scrutiny. It was open season, and I intended to be the ruthless huntress ensuring my prey had nowhere to run. This is Cynthia Davis, reporting live, where yet another protest is unfolding against the controversial Wilson Luxury Condos project. A blonde reporter announced on the local news, cameras panning across a crowd of angry demonstrators. I smirked as Eli's harried face flashed on screen, dodging microphones and chants of corrupt while trying to exit his ostentatious sports car. A delicious sense of vindication coursed through me. My phone rang, displaying a number I recognized as Alicia's, a local journalist who had eagerly agreed to help amplify my cause. Mira, you watchdog you, she greeted in a conspiratorial tone when I answered. Thanks to those internal documents you leaked, the Zoning Commission has opened an official inquiry into Wilson's blatant code violations. Wonderful news, I purred, reveling in Eli's rapidly accumulating woes. But we're just getting started, Alicia. I have a full dossier on their underhanded dealings, everything from environmental shortcuts to shady investment laundering. There was a pause, then an incredulous chuckle from Alicia. You really did your homework, didn't you? This will bury those smug bastards in a legal hellscape of their own making. That's the idea, I replied coolly. You have my full permission and cooperation to unleash the complete expose. No punches pulled. Overnight, a veritable tsunami of sordid revelations hit the presses. 
Alicia's scathing front-page article methodically eviscerated the facade of propriety around Eli's precious project. Stories of greased palms, backroom deals, and egregious flouting of regulations splashed across newspapers and airwaves alike. Absolutely shameful, a panel discussant opined on a local talk show, my comprehensive evidence laid out before him. Wilson Development's contempt for ethical business practices seems to know no bounds. Why should hardworking taxpayers foot the bill for their blatant profiteering? The public relations nightmare showed no signs of abating as the list of Eli's sins grew by the day. Government inquiries were launched, construction permits frozen, investors began jumping ship in droves repulsed by the reputational fallout. It was sheer poetic justice when Lena herself showed up unannounced on my boutique's doorstep, eyes rimmed with smudged mascara. He lied to me, she lamented brokenly as I ushered her inside, pulling a pristine handkerchief from my pocket to dab at her tears. About all of it. Sympathy was in short supply, considering how readily she had sneered at me during our unpleasant reunion. But I permitted her to unburden herself regardless. I come from old money, but we always took pride in conducting business ethically, honorably, Lena explained between hiccuped sobs. When I saw the things Eli had done, the corners cut and people exploited just to line his pockets, I was revolted. Somehow I'm not surprised, I said flatly. Eli's moral bankruptcy was always his most defining feature. Lena's eyes hardened imperceptibly. Thank you for opening my eyes, Mira. I'm withdrawing all my family's capital from Wilson development effective immediately. The revelation was a blow that even I hadn't anticipated. A wolfish grin tugged at my lips as I ushered the distraught woman out. Thou, I'm sorry you had to find out this way, Lena. I lied through my teeth. But maybe next time you'll think twice before judging those you deem beneath you. With her familial finances up in smoke and legal pressures mounting from every direction, even Eli could no longer ignore the writing etched in indelible scarlet on the crumbling wall. He slid into the passenger seat of my car one evening, as I was locking up the boutique, his face drooping with barely restrained fury. "'What do you want, Eli?' I asked calmly, unsurprised by his unannounced visit, his jaw clenched as he struggled to maintain his rapidly fraying composure. "'This has gone too far, Mira. You've humiliated me, sabotaged my entire life's work, alienated the woman I love—' all out of some pathetic need for vengeance over our divorce. I simply laughed, loud and genuine, at his impotent outburst. You think this is about mere vengeance? That's just the deliciously sweet icing on top of the justice you've earned through your own reprehensible actions. Reaching across the console, I gripped his rail-thin tie and pulled him toward me until our faces were mere inches apart. Eli recoiled from the ferocity blazing in my gaze. This was about decimating the unethical, greed-fueled empire you were foolish enough to build, I hissed with lethal certitude. You've spent your entire life trampling on the dreams and well-being of others to sate your own ravenous ambition. Well, now it's all been laid bare for the world to see. Releasing him with a contemptuous shove, I drank in the sight of Eli utterly shattered, a pitiful mockery of the arrogant snake who once sought to gentrify my beloved neighborhood out of existence. Don't worry, Eli, I sneered with blistering condescension. I'll be sure to send you a lovely housewarming gift for that quaint new hovel you and your billions can afford. Pulling away, I left him crumpled and defeated on the rain-slicked curb, the pitiable king rat finally dethroned from his rotten empire. The flames of vengeance had been stoked to an inferno, immolating any remnants of Eli's unscrupulous ambitions to ashes and I would savor every delectable ember until the bitterness between us was finally cauterized, purged from existence forever. In the wake of the expose, Eli's opulent life unraveled with brutal efficiency. The once unstoppable Wilson Luxury Condos project ground to an unceremonious halt as legal challenges and financial penalties piled up. City inspectors swarmed the barren construction site like locusts, issuing violation after violation based on my meticulously compiled evidence. A labyrinth of bureaucratic roadblocks and injunctions erected an impenetrable barrier to the development ever regaining momentum. It's a quagmire of their own making, a gleeful Alicia reported as footage rolled of the abandoned site behind her, and a well-deserved reckoning for the corner-cutting, law-flouting hubris Wilson development epitomized. 
distressed investors began bailing in droves, terrified of being branded accomplices in the project's unethical dealings. Investment capital swiftly evaporated into vapor as lawsuits compounded. I could scarcely conceal my glee watching Eli's pretentious dreams crash and burn in spectacular fashion. When the news broke that Lena herself had severed all financial ties in disgust, delivering a PR death knell to the beleaguered venture, I couldn't resist a visit to Eli's once glittering high-rise office. You've got some nerve showing your smug face here, he spat upon seeing me swagger through the door unannounced. I simply shrugged, unfazed by his aggression. I'm just admiring the scenery as your hollow empire crumbles from the inside out. His bloodshot eyes bored into me with impotent rage. You, you, you've destroyed everything I built. My reputation, my business future, my relationship with the only woman I've ever truly loved, all over some petty vendetta. Wake up and smell the ashes, Eli, I sneered coldly. This was never about vengeance. It was about dismantling the blight of unrestrained greed that you personify. I cast a disdainful glance around the lavish but increasingly desolate office space. All of this, it was built on a gilded foundation of exploitation and corner-cutting, pretty on the surface, but a rotting, ethical void eating away at the core. Grabbing the exquisite crystal decanter off his bar cart, I held it up to the light streaming through the plate-glass window. You always did favor the trappings of success over genuine substance, didn't you? With a contemptuous sneer, I dropped the priceless ornament onto the marble floor, watching impassively as it shattered into glittering shards. Just like your self-anointed empire, I intoned. One well-placed crack in the veneer, and the whole rotten edifice implodes under the weight of its malignant foundations. Eli looked on, furious but impotent, as I turned on my heel and sauntered toward the exit. I hope it was worth it, Eli, sacrificing integrity, ethical conduct, even the love of those closest to you, all in pursuit of that elusive success only the truly deluded could prize above all else. But don't worry. I tossed back over my shoulder with a mocking wink. I'll be sure to stay tuned as your downfall reaches its fitting inevitable conclusion. As I departed through the cavernous marbled lobby, leaving Eli to stew in the financial wreckage of his corporate kingdom, I felt lighter than I had in years. A profound, cathartic release surged through me, expunging the lingering ghosts of betrayal and heartache that had shadowed me for too long. Eli had crafted his own undoing through sheer, unadulterated greed and hubris. There was no need for vengeance, for stooping to match his depravity in order to defeat it. In his quest to create an empire at any ethical cost, he had simply handed me the means to unravel it using the integrity and perseverance he always dismissed as foolish. It was the ultimate deliverance of poetic justice, an empire of rot, dismantled from within by the integrity of one determined woman. I thought of Rajesh, Angela the thrift store owner, and the others who had lent their voices and support to my grassroots crusade. This decisive victory was as much theirs as mine, a stirring testament to the power of community solidarity over rapacious self-interest. As for Eli, his fall from corporate grace was only just beginning. Lawsuits, financial ruination, criminal probes. The karmic hammer would strike again and again until nothing remained of his tainted legacy. Only then could full reckoning be delivered. Still, a beatific smile tugged at my lips as I envisioned the years of ruin ahead for my disgraced ex-husband. The velvet flames of vengeance had finally burned themselves out. But the smoky embers of triumph warmed my soul with a profound, unshakable peace. My monster had been well and truly slain, not through hatred, but through the inexorable power of human perseverance over malignant greed. And as the sun set over my unblemished horizon, I inhaled deeply, at last tasting the crisp, revitalizing air of true deliverance. In the aftermath of Eli's downfall, a wave of support and goodwill buoyed my humble boutique. What was once a solitary endeavor blossomed into a vibrant community hub, embraced by the very neighbors I had fought to protect. Did you see the incredible spread they did on you in City Living magazine? Angela, the animated owner of the nearby thrift store, gushed one sunny afternoon as she browsed my signature rack of embroidered boho dresses. Mira Ventura, the unstoppable force of neighborhood integrity, she read aloud from the glossy cover, her voice swelling with pride. Not bad for a little hobby business, eh? 
I laughed, equal parts embarrassed and deeply moved by the outpouring of support from those who once viewed me as just another quirky boutique owner. I was simply doing what anyone would do when faced with defending their community, I demurred modestly. But secretly, I reveled in the evidence that my steadfast perseverance had transformed me into a celebrated local icon. Well, this unstoppable force has another loyal customer. Angela winked, draping a vivid, magenta dress adorned with intricate floral embroidery over her tanned arm. Dinner with the girls is going to be so much cuter thanks to you. As she handed me her payment, I reflected on how my once solitary crusade had sparked a revitalized community spirit throughout the neighborhood. The threat of crass gentrification and cultural erasure had unified us all in a way I could have never predicted. From Rajesh's cheerful curry house to the Brunswick lanes where Andrea still reigned as bingo queen, my fellow small business owners radiated a renewed sense of vigor and determination to preserve the eclectic soul of our little enclave. No longer were we just strangers coexisting on the same bustling street corners. We were a tribe bonded by our shared trials and triumphs. Many nights, we would spill from whichever watering hole we congregated at and amble down the vibrantly muraled sidewalks, energized by the lively cross-pollination of cultures that made our neighborhood such a rare gem. In those moments, I felt an overwhelming swell of gratitude toward whatever cosmic forces had delivered me to this confluence of resilient individualists. Because in defending the authenticity of our home, I had inadvertently crafted my own rebirth from the ashes of past traumas. The specter of Eli and his betrayals no longer loomed like a perpetual storm cloud over my outlook. For far too long, I had allowed the baggage of our toxic marriage to define my identity and path forward. But seeing firsthand the transformative power of solidarity over cynicism had catalyzed my own metamorphosis from jaded divorcee into the self-actualized woman I had buried beneath the rubble of unrealistic expectations. I was Mira Ventura, the boutique owner who fought gentrification behemoths and emerged victorious without compromising her integrity. The unyielding spirit who rallied an entire community's resistance through sheer grit and determination. And most importantly, I was no longer a casualty of circumstance, but the master architect crafting my own destiny from a canvas of endless possibility. Here's to new beginnings, I murmured the next evening, raising a glass of crisp white wine in a private toast. The soft clinking of crystal resonated like the sweet melody of liberty, echoing the exhilaration of having crossed the threshold into an invigorating future, untainted by the demons of the past. My path would be paved by the courage of my own convictions, not shackled to the whims of those blinded by greed and pretense. I would embrace each new sunrise as a blessing of infinite potential, savoring the hard-won wisdom of one who stared defeat in the eyes and uncovered her unshakable spirit. As the velvety summer night enveloped my bustling neighborhood in its warm, enfolding embrace, I stepped outside and inhaled the heady scents of revelry. Spicy curry and street fare intermingling with the floral bouquets adorning the sidewalk trees. My monster had been vanquished, my quest for integrity and authenticity triumphant, and for the first time in far too long I surrendered completely to the euphoric promise of new horizons gleaming brilliantly before me. A smile tugged at my lips as I meandered down the incandescent street, the melodic sounds of my community's vibrant soul caressing my world-seasoned heart. This was my rebirth, my deliverance into the life of abundance and purpose I had fiercely reclaimed through the ashes of adversity, and nothing I knew with serene certainty could ever extinguish the brilliant radiance of this new dawn.